Amanda, John is back. Are you there? This is one young woman. If you are here, Let's hear from Swane. Are you there? Swane, are you there? Let's get a song from Swane. Amanda, 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 Viva ANC, Viva, Viva ANC, Viva. Comrades, we'll start with our conference as, no, no, comrades, uh -uh. whoa. Comrades, we will be coming back. This is not the last time. Can I request that we all stand up? All male comrades must take off their hats. We are going to be singing the national anthem, but we'll be getting a CD that will lead us in the national anthem. Can I request that you all stand up, comrades? Let's get a song. Wherever you are, stand still, don't move until we finish with the song.
Amanda. Amanda. Can I request Reverend Muerane to come in front so that you can pray for us? Reverend Muerane. Morning, comrades, friends, and colleagues, the president of the movement and the chair of the province, the entire PEC in the house and branches, branch leaders and delegates. My task as a member of the Houtensia Commission for Religious Affairs under the ANC was to be able to bring and present the leaders from different faiths. Unfortunately, today, we were not able to bring them in the house. So therefore, we are consolidating what the team was supposed to do as a commission to making sure that we don't forget the tradition of this movement, where it comes from. We can say whatever we say or anticipate whatever we can anticipate. But if the one who created the heaven and earth doesn't take charge of our processes, we can fail. We remember this time in the centenary of Madiba and Memasisulu to say whatever we do, even when we pray, we pray in remembrance of their lives, making sure that those values that they stood for, we carry them along. My message this morning just come from the book of Jeremiah because we are in a state where we need to do something. And this conference is charged with a mandate to do something when we get out of this house on Sunday. And every delegate in this house should commit herself or himself to say whatever resolution that we take in this house, we are going to implement them. So help us, God, to do that. My message is short and straightforward. I'm calling upon my colleague, uh, Bishop Adams, just to come, that after I've said what I've said, then we can together pray and leave the podium. When we reflect from Jeremiah 8, verse 22, I'm posing these questions as they were, they were posed by Jeremiah himself. So I'm raising these questions to the conference. Jeremiah said, is there no balm in Gilgad. The question this morning is, is there no balm in Houten to repair the damage that we see? Went on to say, is there no healing physician there in that province? When you, yesterday when I was here to register, when I came here, it was clear, but when I drove back to the Val where I stayed, the road was closed with stones. There were cars which were damaged by unscrupulous people, Asian provocators, who want to display the face that we are failing, when it's not like that. And I was happy to see the security forces moving in to clear the road. That's why then I say to conference, is there no balm in this province? The medicine is in this house. The medicine to heal this province is in this house. All the delegates of the African National Congress from the branches, you are, you are a physician who should go out. I always say to Sanko leadership where I come from, I fail to understand why the matches are not led by Sanko, but are led by people who say are concerned residents. When you have leaders on the ground who should be leading these marches so that you take the space, you don't allow wrongdoers to lead the marches because they do so with other agendas. They don't necessarily say, because there is a problem, let's go and present the problem. Hence, today, Jeremiah says to us, is there no balm in this house to heal this province? Is there no physician who can come with a medicine to come to heal the broken hearts of the people of, of this province. I agree with the acting chair of the province, Haare. 
Because of our success as a province, everyone wants to come to Khauti to settle here. And we cannot chase people away from the former homelands. But the question is, when they do so, let them do so, Batsivahore. This is a problem, a province in Anemelao, Lady Tamaiso, Telo Lami. When you go down the streets, one of our Tabasa Mikuku, Kama saying, Kebank Lady Plastic, Kibaisa Mikuku Kari Plastic. Then you ask yourself, who are these people? Where do they come from? What is their agenda? Is their agenda not to undermine the policies and any other program of action that the party has designed to say, this is how we want to implement all the decisions of the national conference. So I'm saying to the leadership, to the provinces here, you are the physicians for this province. As Jeremiah asked the question, are there no physicians in that city? I say, these are physicians and you are here you got a medicine, and the medicine that you have is a simple one, is the constitutionality of our decision. Any decision that we take based on the principles and the constitution of the ANC, that's what you should carry in your bag when anybody asks you, why are you doing that over there? In terms of rule number 55, or in terms of rule number 67, or whatever rule that you know, answer and give that person the precise answer. No one should do anything outside that. That is the medicine that we should take. And no one should move out of this house. Even though they said this, this is how I feel. It's not about how you feel. It's about the decision that the collective have taken in this house. Thank you very much. Muruti, can you pray for us? Shall we pray? Let us bow our heads and close our eyes. Father, we submit to your authority. We submit to your lordship. And we submit to your kingship. Almighty God and heavenly Father, we have been shaped what we have come out from. In fact, it is impossible not to be shaped at what we came out from. We stand before you today and Proverbs 30 verse 8 and 9 says, Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me. Make me content, lest I be full. And Father God, forget where I come from. Father, I pray today, let me not be one who steals, one who takes, one who profanes your name. Father, we are crying out to you in the obedience to your word. There are 13 plus million people that are looking to us today in Gauteng province. So we humble ourselves before you. We pray first of all for our own hearts our own hearts to be pure and to be clean. Lord, we love this province. This province of ours you have given to us. You have given us freedom and liberty. We don't just want victory for victory's sake. And victory at all cost. We pray for great conviction. So today we pray, Father, to make a mark. We want to make a statement today that will reverberate across Gauteng to all the corners of this province. We bring before you the election that must take place during this conference. We pray for leaders who have servant hearts, humble hearts, honest hearts, unselfish hearts, caring hearts. This is the leadership we want to present to the 13 plus million people of Gauteng. So today I bless this conference in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And everybody say amen. 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 Amen.
faith-based leaders. I'm sure the Spirit of God is with us now. Now that we have officially opened our meeting, let me take this opportunity to welcome all delegates from our branches, REC delegates, NEC members in the category of those that are invited that were serving with us, I need to remind you that our Treasurer General, who is our former Chairperson of the province, is here with us. We have our NEC member, who is the former Deputy Chairperson of this province, Comrade Nombula Mukonyana, here. I have our NEC members, our former Provincial Deputy Secretary, Comrade Gwen Ramukhupa, is here. We have our PWC member, who is an NEC member now, Comrade Papa Christi, with us here. We also have NEC deployees in this particular province, led by Comrade Joe Masangani, who is... Oh, he's back now. Okay. Comrade Pemi Machodina. There's no, there's no DJ here. Uh, Comrade Uwako Ramasodi. Comrade Nkosa Zanazuma. Zamini Zuma. Siabonga, Siabonga, Comrade. Manza. We also have Comrade Mduma Nana with us. Then we also have Comrade uh, Pule Mabi, who's our spokesperson. But with us, we also have PEC members who are finishing their term within the few hours. Can I ask all PEC members just to wave? We also have leadership from Kosatu. Comrade Kosatu, if you can wave wherever you are. We have comrades from the South African Communist Party. In the leadership in our province, Yabashali Isanko. There. We also have the PEC of the Veterans League seated here in front. We have the ANC Youth League sitting there. <laughs> We also have the ANC Women's League. We also have other leadership from various sectors. I'm not going to call them because they are just too many, but we have other sectors that are here, faith-based. But we also have our ambassadors from Cuba, 
Venezuela, Western Sahara, Palestine as well. Yeah? Our ambassador, viva the solidarity movement, viva. Thank you very much. But we also have our president of the ANC. Viva! Viva Unity of the African National Congress! Viva. Viva! Thank you very much, comrades. I also forgot to mention that we have our REC's from all the regions in our province as well. REC members. Thank you very much, comrades. I don't want to actually raise a lot of issues now. But I just want to allow our president of the ANC to come and address us, as he also had, has other commitments. So we don't want to delay the president. Already we have delayed because we are supposed to start at 10. But while Comrade was still busy outside, we wasted a lot of time. So let me allow our president to come and talk to his members. Thank you very much. Over to you, President. Viva ANC, viva! Viva Cosatu, viva! Viva SACP, viva! Viva Sanko, viva! Long live the spirit of Nelson Mandela, long live! Long live the spirit of Albertina Sisulu, long live! Amanda! Forward with Gauteng, forward! Forward with Gauteng, forward! Comrades, thank you very much. Program Director, Acting Provincial Chairperson, Comrade David Makura, members of the outgoing PEC, members of the National Executive Committee, the Treasurer General, of the African National Congress, leaders of the ANC Women's League, the Veterans League, the ANC Youth League, leaders of our alliance partners, SACP, COSATU, and SANCO, representatives of the YCL, SASCO, and COSAS, our international visitors, delegates, comrades, and friends. Comrades, allow me to extend and convey revolutionary greetings from the National Executive Committee of your movement, the African National Congress. 
Just two days ago, as we all know, we celebrated the centenary of the birth of one of the most outstanding revolutionaries born of our people and natured by our movement, Utata Unelson Holishasa Mandela. The centennial celebrations in our country and far beyond our shores confirm that Nelson Mandela truly belongs to the world. His actions will echo across generations. Strangers will hear his name and know at once how bravely he fought and how fiercely he loved freedom. As members of the African National Congress, Indeed, as citizens of this beautiful country, South Africa, we are truly honored and privileged to have had such a person who was born in our country and was so dearly and thoroughly loved and embraced by the whole world. Whilst the world is delighted to honor Madiba, as well as to immortalize him through statues, names of buildings, names of streets. We need to make Madiba mean much more than just statues, buildings, and the names of streets. It was particularly pleasing when we had the African Union Summit in Mauritania, a country that is largely desert, to see a name named after Madiba, which runs right throughout the desert of that country into the deserts of other countries. It was pleasing to see that name running through the desert, and one wondered whether at some stage we would see a name of Madiba even running into the sea and running under the sea. Possibly if somebody goes under the sea one day, they will most probably find Nelson Mandela Street underneath the sea waters. <laughs> what he stood for in the form of his values and humanity needs to be immortalized and deeply embedded in our hearts, and we need also to be driven, particularly as members of the African National Congress, by the values that Madiba lived for. We must embrace those values, not because we seek to become global icons like Madiba is, but because we joined his movement, the African National Congress, and we joined it genuinely to make our contribution as ordinary members of the ANC to the efforts to build a better country, a better continent, and a better world. I am encouraged, program director, that the theme of this 13th Provincial Conference of Gauteng is itself inspired by Madiba's values of unity, integrity, and service. While Madiba embodied those values, values such as, yes, integrity, truthfulness, honesty, unity, service and commitment to our people, these values are central to the mission and character of the African National Congress. They are enshrined in the oath that each one of us took and takes on becoming a member of the African National Congress. At this critical moment of renewal, and unity, as well as winning back the confidence of our people, 
we are reminded of the oath that every one of us ought to keep in mind as we continue with our commitment to the people of our country to serve them. In the oath, we declare that we are joining the organization voluntarily and without motives of material advantage or personal gain. We pledge as we take this oath that we will work towards making the ANC an even more effective instrument of liberation in the hands of the people, defend the unity and integrity of the organization and its principles, and combat any tendency towards disruption and factionalism. The people of South Africa, comrades, need to see this pledge <clears throat> that each one of us takes reflected in our words, in our actions, in the way that we conduct ourselves. We need to have a lively and courageous imagination of living the values of the African National Congress. Our people need to see that this act of living the values of the ANC in us is not only grounded on policy, but also in the moral values that have a high content in integrity and commitment to serve our people. They need to feel it in their daily lives as we walk and work alongside them to improve their living conditions and transform their communities. It is the ANC that must reach deeply into the hearts of our people and touch the noble soul of each one of them. In doing all this, we need to remember the reasons that led to the formation of our glorious movement in 1912. In the end, we need to ask ourselves, what other reason is there really for the existence of the ANC other than for it to transform the lives of our people? This conference, therefore, needs to pay attention with regard to our, our standing in society and also with regard to the relationship between the ANC structures and the communities that those structures are meant to serve. The preamble of our Constitution says that the ANC emerged to lead all democratic and patriotic forces to destroy apartheid. This glorious movement was accepted and recognized as the organizer and inspirer of a vast array of forces in our country. We were then crowned as the African National Congress as the leader of society by all and sundry. We need to ask ourselves whether this crowning still holds true in this day and age. If we are to regain and retain our standing as the leader of society, we must examine the strength of our movement both nationally, provincially, and indeed at regional, at zonal, as well as at branch level. We must measure the strength of the ANC at all levels to see whether its structures are structures that are able to take on the tasks of being the leader 
or making the African National Congress the leader of society. This indeed extends to the role of branch members in their own communities. In their daily lives, they must be seen as exemplary, as people who contribute to make a meaningful difference in the lives of our people at the local level. They should be active in community structures like ward committees, clinic committees, hospital boards, school governing bodies, community policing forums, and many other structures within our communities. They should be supporting NGOs and indeed participate in those NGOs. They should be participating in community-based organizations and also be playing leading roles also in faith-based organizations and working with them to advance the national democratic revolution. For our revolution is all encompassing. It is not only located in politics or in political structures. It is all pervasive and it should touch every aspect of the lives of our people. This conference needs to reflect on whether this is the case here in Gauteng. The 2016 local government elections, comrades, in which we saw a dramatic decline in support for the ANC suggests that there was something that was amiss amongst us as members of the African National Congress. The results revealed much about the presence of our organization in communities and its responsiveness to the needs and concerns of the electorate. Delegates to this conference must necessarily honestly assess the extent to which our weaknesses as leaders and as members contributed to the decline in electoral support even among our traditional supporters. In doing this assessment, we must not tear each other apart, but we must speak the truth without fear of, of favor, with a sole intent to self-correct. And this is what we are known for as the African National Congress. We are able to address issues pointedly, in a straightforward manner, as well as honestly. Just as we claim and celebrate victories as a collective, so we should take collective responsibility for our weaknesses. Our process of introspection, which may at times be painful, must be undertaken in a manner that safeguards the unity of our movement. Everything done at this conference must be aimed at consolidating the unity of our movement, renewing it, and restoring the confidence of our people in it. We must emerge out of this conference certain that we have put behind us and for all the the negative tendencies that serve only to create distance between us and the people. We must emerge out of this conference having embraced the unity that the 54th conference so urged all of us as members of the African National Congress to forge. The conference was very clear as we rose from that conference, the delegates assembled there, and I know that many of you were there, said, go and unite the African National Congress. Do nothing to divide it. 
do everything to consolidate the unity that this glorious movement so needs. Leading up to that conference, yes, we were desperate forces. We were essentially divided. But arising from that conference, the conference delegates said, unity must be the overriding theme and renewal must underpin everything that we need to do. And indeed, congregates, we will find that there is strength in unity, there is power in unity, there is determination in unity. It is only when we are united that we will be able to have a strong African National Congress. When we are united, we are able to face any obstacle and any task. I was being told that, yes, even in the face of contestation here in Gauteng, unity is going to be the overall theme that all of you will embrace. They even told me that here in Gauteng, even as comrades contest one another, they contest one another like bo bra, bo sister. That's what I've been told. Or lali contestana, lady bra, lady sister. Oto wina ngota ba embrace the other bra, a violin a ram fanaguti. Lau luzi se kunze kule gren. Just as, comrades, just as leading up to the 54th conference, comrade Nkosaza and Adamini Zuma and I were contesting each other. Fandahe Ribra, listen, sir. Ribaya, sir. Ribaya, sir. And co cabineting, Ridula next to each other. And a Rudula Ritzarana Mato Hoda Ritzarana Mato Yebo Gunjal Comrade Nkosas and Ushalala et to Seguam Sibabarangesan and a pansy with a fool. Comrades. No, I know some of you have a fertile imagination. No. Largely because what we did do, we understood very clearly the tried and tested practice in the African National Congress. That if you have contested each other in a conference, after the conference, if one of you has been invested with the confidence of the membership, you have to work together, whether you love each other or not. Now, other comrades, and you know there is this new tendency in the ANC where contestation basically means hatred for one another where comrades hate each other so much that they don't even want to work together, to look at each other, and to even hold hands under the table. That must come to an end because the African National Congress is the organization that gives us mandates. It says, you are going to work with so-and-so, and you do not choose who you are going to work with. The members of the African National Congress choose who you are going to work with. That is why leading up to the conference, leading up to the conference, I myself even made a mistake and said, hey, the membership of the ANC, Yati, you are naughty. We are not going to give you that one to work with. We will choose ourselves who you are going to work with. 
So even here, comrades, allow the delegates at this conference to choose the leadership of the African National Congress. Allow the delegates to choose themselves. And you know, comrades, as I am going around the country, a number of our structures keep on saying, President, we just wish national leaders of the ANC should not interfere in the choice of the leaders at the provincial level. Some, even in the Youth League, they say, President, we ask that national leaders must not interfere. Allow us as young people to choose our own leaders. Comrades, it is therefore important that the concept, the issue of unity must be so well embraced by us. We must embrace it so strongly because anything that militates against unity weakens the African National Congress. The ANC becomes weak when there is no unity. And the public, the electorate, when they see us fighting, when they see disunity amongst us, they walk away from us. Right now, the public, the electorate is warming up to the African National Congress. They are warming up because they see us preaching the message of unity, they see us preaching the message of renewal, and they see us forging this unity Unity is not a one-day process. It takes time and work. Unity is And we must work to forge this unity that we must have. So comrades, let us remember that people watch our actions. They listen to what we say. And when leaders seem to be differing and fighting amongst themselves, that leads to the loss of votes. People just walk away from us. It's just like at home. When parents fight, the children, you know, they become disoriented. Because they can see that there is a fight at home. The African National Congress is like our family. Let us stop fighting. Let us embrace each other in unity as we renew our African National Congress. Our people, comrades, will have confidence in us if they have a sense that we are united, if they have a sense that we listen to them, we listen to their concerns, and if they have a sense that indeed we are finally on the path of renewal. Our people have a sense and must have a sense that we are prepared to address those issues that were causing them to walk away from us. They must get a good sense that yes, the issues that were drifting, making them to drift away from us are being addressed. The issues that made them alienate themselves from us are being addressed. Corruption must be addressed, and they want to see that indeed we are taking action on corruption because that is what was causing them to move away from us. Our people must also have a sense that we are prepared to address their struggles and not the struggles of those who just appear on the front pages of newspapers. They must have a sense that we are prepared to address the struggles of the most vulnerable women, people living in rural areas, people living in informal settlements, and yes, the youth of our country. Never again must our people believe that as we gather here, 
We are interested only in fighting for positions for ourselves as leaders. When the people of Gauteng see us here at this conference, they must, as they watch us, they must, as they listen to the outcomes of this, our deliberations here, they must feel that they are represented. They must feel that their hopes, their aspirations, their fears, their concerns, their futures, and indeed, their faith in the future of the province and of the country is acutely well understood by us and it is going to be addressed. Conference must be firm against all foreign practices, comrades, which erode the confidence of our people in the ANC, such as the manipulation of membership processes in our own organization, because that is a new illness that has set in now. They must have a sense that we are eroding practices such as gatekeeping, bulk buying of membership, and even violence. And it's wonderful to see that this conference is taking place without any attempt of anyone to push their weight around. The ANC 54th Conference Comrades set the organization on a path of renewal. It is our shared responsibility to give expression to that renewal here in Gauteng. It must start with individual members and also get across to every branch. And it must extend into all our activities into the way, yes, we conduct ourselves in government. We are therefore called upon to give content to the meaning of renewal that the 54th Conference envisaged and decided on. We must also give meaning to this concept of renewal also in the leaders that we choose and ask ourselves, as we choose our leaders, are they the type of leaders who are going to renew the African National Congress, who are going to unite the ANC, who are going to make sure that the ANC becomes an appealing organization to the masses of our people? Renewal must also have an impact in the way our alliance works, whether it is a reconfigured alliance or not, our relations within the alliance must be on a renewal path. The alliance political council met the other day and we all committed ourselves to renewal and to forging unity. And for the first time in many, many, many years, the political council of the alliance was at one in, ad in addressing the political challenges that face our people. It was at one in addressing even the most intricate issues, such as, yes, the national budget, how it should be structured, such as the SOE issues, such as how we address problems of corruption. So it was one of the most wonderful political uh, alliance council meetings. And we hope that it is going to be mirrored by what happens at the provincial level and what will happen also at the regional level and indeed at branch level. We had a deep sense that it is when the, the alliance works together that we will be able to have much faster and greater advances to the national democratic revolution. Comrades, the economic emancipation of all our people is a responsibility that history has placed on our shoulders as the African National Congress and indeed as the Alliance, and we dare not fail our people. This conference must determine what practical measures 
we need to take to make this a reality. This is important for this province because you are the heartbeat of the economy of our country. Without Gauteng, we have no economy. So Gauteng stands right at the center of the economic life of our country, and it is the decisions that you take here which are going to give meaning and flesh to the decisions that were taken at the national conference that are going to continue to drive the economy of our country. At the top of our minds must be addressing the three challenges that our country continues to face. Unemployment, inequality, and indeed, yes, poverty. And we must look at the moment that exists now as a great opportunity that we are given as the African National Congress in Gauteng to exercise the leadership once again, to demonstrate and show that yes, here in Gauteng, we can give leadership on the trajectory of the economy of our country. Gauteng is a major destination for investment. And it was with this in mind that we launched the investment drive to raise $100 billion, which is 1.3 trillion rand for investment in the productive economy of our country in the next five years. When we launched this drive, it was to infuse growth in the economy of Gauteng. And Gauteng stood up very, very prominently in our minds because it is here where we need this 1.3 trillion. Of course, it has to be spread throughout the whole nation and Gauteng must have its fair share of this 1.3 trillion as well. It is our responsibility to leverage everything that we can. Recently, we went to the Middle East and visiting firstly Nigeria, where we met a number of business people and invited them to come and invest in South Africa. And we received enthusiastic interest even amongst Nigerian investors. But it was when we went to Saudi Arabia where we were able to get real commitments for $10 billion to come to our country here in South Africa that we felt we were now on a roll. As we went to the UAE, they immediately said, what is it that you need? And we said, we want investments in the productive economy of our country. And they said, Mr. President, we've been waiting for this moment to support the efforts that you are involved in in South Africa. And we are prepared to match Saudi Arabia and give you $10 billion of investments as well. So, as we continue, comrades, to raise this $100 billion over the next five years, we believe that we can focus, focus on beginning to inject growth into our economy because injecting growth into our economy was a clear mandate that we were given by our conference that we should go out and make South Africa a conducive environment for investments to come here. We need to ensure that this investment benefits our people through the creation of jobs, particularly young people. We need to establish effective pathways for young people to find employment and to be active participants in the economy of our country, particularly as we have to face up to the fourth industrial revolution. I had occasion to sit down with the CEOs of some of the top ICT companies in the world, Microsoft and Google and many others, and they informed me that they are hugely impressed with the level of ICT knowledge in South Africa and that South Africans are techno-savvy, and that South Africa, in their view, has everything that can lend itself
to be a leading hub of business processing initiatives. And we said to them, well, we are open for investments. Please come to South Africa and invest, but at the same time, empower our local companies, particularly youth-led companies and women-led companies. And they said, we are ready, Mr. President. So to do so, comrades, we need to pay attention also to a whole range of other things that we need to do in a practical way. For instance, here in Gauteng, we need to work very hard to reduce the cost of living. The cost of living is one of the key areas that we need to pay attention to. And we do this for starters by looking at the spatial development architecture of our country where our people live. Many of our people still spend 40 to 50% of their income on transport. We've got to reduce that. And I know, of course, that one of the issues that people in Gauteng want to see resolved is the question of the e-tolls. I know that. We are, and you will be hearing about this in the political report that will be given by uh, Comrade David Makura, we are engaged in discussions on the issue of e-tolls, and we would like conference to also discuss this matter, as you have done in the past. We need also to bring our people, particularly in the poor, into the working closer into the economic centers of our country. We applaud the work that is being undertaken by the provincial government, as led by the African National Congress, to provide people with land for housing in the major urban areas. This we applaud, in addition to the construction of suitable housing in well-located areas, we should also be providing people with service sites so that they can build their own structures. And in this regard, I want to applaud, I want to applaud our provincial government as led by Comrade David Makura in the efforts that they have been making and where I have seen it in real life, where they have been handing out title deeds to our people. And this is a process, one of those things that we have to do to redistribute land and assets to our people. So I applaud you, Comrade David Makura, for giving a lead on this matter. And comrades, the other important thing that we have to discuss, and we have to discuss in real terms, is to discuss the idea of radical economic transformation on how this can be realized at grassroots level where our people are located. We need to go beyond slogans. We need to implement our policy of radical economic transformation in reality. We need to use the leverage that we have. The leverage that we have, comrades, is the procurement budget that our government has. It is through that that we should be able to create black-controlled and owned businesses, small and medium enterprises that can be actively involved in real economic activity. And we need to support our businesses. You know, in successful economies around the world, comrades, government plays the role of a facilitator. It plays the role of giving support, yes, to enterprises, so that they can stand on their feet and get going. We have already started doing so with our Black Industrialist Program. We are giving them maximum support. We want to create a hundred of them. But at the same time, there are many and thousands of small and medium enterprises that we need to create, to support, and to open a number of wonderful pathways in giving them either finance and market space. 
This we should do because it is through this that we will be able to move beyond the slogan of radical economic transformation and do the real nuts and bolts work that needs to be done. And I would like to see Gauteng leading the pack on this issue, and you have the capability to do so. <laughs> Members of the ANC and Alliance should play a supportive role in local infrastructure projects, ensuring their smooth implementation and ensuring that they benefit local communities. These projects, comrades, provide much needed jobs to our people. They also give relief to and income to many in our communities. This radical economic transformation means taking steps to ensure that all projects that are targeted are reached to benefit local people. We must act decisively against those within our own ranks who get involved in activities that disrupt these projects and those within our own ranks who get involved in projects in a way that is questionable. By the same measure, our members must desist from becoming part of violent local protests because they undermine the stability of our democracy and cause damage to the property and breed conflict. We cannot have a situation where members of the African National Congress, even members of SANCO and members of other components of the Alliance get involved in protests and are the ones who lead these violent protests that happen and damage the assets of our nation. That must come to a stop with immediate effect. Our members should rather be in the forefront of seeking solutions to community problems. And as Mfundisi said, it is members of SANCO and indeed members of the ANC as well who should be in the forefront, who should be guiding and leading some of these protests and manifestations in a way that seeks solutions. In fact, there should be solutions first before all these other protests that lead to violence happen. The other important thing, comrades, the empowerment of women should be seen as a process through which we will unlock the latent power and strength of our economy, we should take deliberate steps to seek ways through which we can empower young women by giving them pathways that will enable them to play a key role in the economy of our country. And they must also have pathways to acquire skills. They must also have pathways to be able to get into key positions. And this means also that we must now, as a nation, get on a trajectory that is going to seriously embrace the concept and the issue of equality between men and women also in the workplace, so that men and women must never be paid differently for the amount of work that they do, because it still happens. The women of our nation you know, deserve much more than what possibly the economy is giving them. We want our economy to fully empower our women and make sure that they play the key role that they can play. And it is when women are empowered that we will be able to inject much more meaningful growth in our economy. The abuse of women and children must come to an end in our country. This is an important challenge to all of us. We need to make sure that the women of our country are treated with respect, with dignity, and with honor. And it must start here in the African National Congress. Because it is when 
it starts here in the ANC that we will be able to showcase to the whole nation that indeed the women of our nation must be treated with dignity and with respect. This, comrades, is an important issue that, yes, we need as the African National Congress as we regain our leadership role Leadership role in society is an area that we need to show and demonstrate leadership in. The other area that, yes, we need to be showing leadership in is to show our determination as the African National Congress not to tolerate corruption in any shape or form whatsoever, even within our own ranks. And in fact, the nation now needs to move to another level of handling corruption. We must now embark on a massive project to get back the money that will have been stolen by those who were participating in corrupt activities. There are billions and billions of rands that have been siphoned out. And we must now be saying, we want that money back because that money must go and pay for health. It must go and pay for the schools that our country so needs. Comrades, this conference must also reassert its resolve on the issue of the national health insurance. The national health insurance is an important policy that was adopted by the African National Congress at the Polukwane Conference. We have now published the bill, and we are now saying all of us must rally behind the full implementation of the national health insurance so that, comrades, the hospitals in our province here must become hospitals that our people will always know that they will get the best health care from. I had occasion to visit Tembisa Hospital earlier this year, and what I saw there was not particularly pleasing. And we are now saying we want the national health insurance to be fully implemented because it is when the African National Congress is fully behind the national health insurance, it is when the structures of our movement be it at branch level, at regional level, and at provincial level, looks very, very acutely at the delivery of health care in our hospitals, in our clinic, that we will be able, yes, to regain the support of our people. Because our people will say, indeed, the African National Congress is providing good health care services it is providing a whole range of other wonderful services to our people. Comrades, our people have nowhere else to look. They can only look to the African National Congress to provide this. It is important because also our people are looking at this conference, not necessarily comrades for ideological pronouncements, but they are also looking at greater clarity on how their lives will change for the better when you rise from this conference, when you will have taken decisions. I can tell you with certainty that the people of Gauteng are looking at all of you and hoping that this conference will come out with decisions that are going to take their lives in a different directions. We would have failed if we do not emerge out of this conference with clear answers on how the pace of delivery will be accelerated and how access to basic services will be improved. Comrades, we must remember that we are going to an election. And this election it's going to be a particularly hard-fought one, particularly here in Gauteng. 
every political party is going to be looking at Gauteng and how they can continue to erode the support that we have as the African National Congress. So the election is the key challenge we face, but that election, comrades, is not going to result in votes for us because we are the African National Congress. It is going to take a lot of hard work. It is going to take a lot of campaigning. But at the same time, the various structures that we've got are the structures that our people look forward to, to serve them and to work for them. They are going to be looking at whether, indeed, we are providing good services. I had the joy of going around with Comrade David Makura earlier this year to a number of informal settlements. And people came out in their thousands. And as they came out, you could see that their hopes were pinned, not on any other party, but on the African National Congress. And we gave them an opportunity to express their concerns, their aspirations, and everything else. And their concerns range from the way that our councillors were not providing services to them, and right through also to the way, you know, the sewage had broken down, there was no electricity, the streets were dirty, and all that. But what they found most impressive was how the leadership of the ANC here, at the provincial level, and indeed at that local level, was able to be responsive and how Comrade David Makura committed himself to go back and meet with them and hold as many meetings as possible. And I've kept asking him, did you go back to those communities? And he said, yes, Comrade President, we've been back, we're dealing with the issues, and we are finding solutions. That is what endeared many people to the African National Congress. So comrades, in the end, our people, as we move to the elections, will be expecting a responsive African National Congress. They will be expecting an ANC that is going to provide leadership. They will be expecting an ANC that is going to provide basic services. They will be expecting an ANC, comrades, that is going to fix the sewage that is leaking. They will be expecting an ANC that will repair the taps where they live. They will be expecting an ANC that they can embrace. It is therefore important that, yes, we should not be complacent as the survey results come out. The recent survey results, which I'm sure you will deal with, demonstrate that, yes, here in Gauteng, our support has now risen. It has risen, but our objective is to make it rise way beyond 70% comrades, and it is possible for us to do so. It is important, comrades, that each one of us and all of us sitting here are leaders. You are here, yes, as a branch delegate, but at the same time, we are leaders. Let us go back and exercise leadership and once again demonstrate to our people that yes, this is the ANC that they can once again embrace. This is the ANC that they can once again fall in love with. We should go back and show that yes, as the ANC we want their love back. Like that lover who has lost the love of their loved ones and say, we want your love back. It's fresh, I say, love back, Lily Ngoku. Masambeni, Syrians are in love back. And say, forgive us for whatever wrong things we did. If we forgot your birthday, forgive us. That's what happens in love relationships. Say, we want your love back. Comrades, it is in our hands. It is in our hands to restore the image and the position of the African National Congress. Let us also remember what Comrade O.R. said 
at the 48th Conference of the African National Congress. When Comrade O.R. gave his political report, and I paraphrase, he said to all of us, he said, we have brought the African National Congress back, and we now hand it back to you, intact, more powerful, and more impactful, and with greater influence. This, comrades, is the African National Congress that our people want to have back in their hands. Let, as we rise from this conference, go back to our communities and go and give our people the African National Congress that they love, the African National Congress that they trust, the African National Congress that they want to support. Let us go back and make sure that we do not snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Because as the ANC, as this glorious movement, we are a victorious organization. Let us act like we are victorious, but work for that victory. Thank you very much. Amanda! Viva ANC, viva! Yabonga, comrades. Thank you very much. Ibambe comrade, Ibambe Rangane comrade. Comrade Amanda, Amanda, the commander in chief has spoken. When the commander in, in chief says we must, it's a command, it's non negotiable. When he talks about us assessing ourselves, he said we must. So as branches, we're actually taking that heat, uh, Comrade President, and we'll actually do that as we listen to all the speeches that are going to be delivered, but also as we break into our commissions, we'll ensure that our branches really assess the state of the organization in our province, but also we must resolve on those particular issues. The, the Commander-in-Chief also talk about unity, but not only unity in contestation of positions, but unity in the true sense, because in the NC, we speak about unity of purpose. I am advised by the health practitioners that when food is ready, we need to eat, because if it gets overheated, it can have a negative, negative impact in our bodies. But what we will want to do, as we allow our Commander-in-Chief to ascend the stage, maybe many of us will remain, if we are going to be singing a revolutionary song, let's do so in dignity, and we allow our Commander-in-Chief to leave, then we can also follow thereafter. I'm sure we are going to do that, Comrade, in dignity and respect, respecting our Commander-in-Chief. Can we sing a, a powerful revolutionary song? the song that will unite us. When we're in a conference, if we have not sung about Oliver Tambo, we've not even started with the conference. Can we get somebody who can sing so well? Because if I can sing, it will be a disaster. Oliver, 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 Oliver,
Let me announce uh, as to where we're going to be, what, are we, what is it that we're going to be doing now? We'll be breaking for lunch until half past two. And I wish to request the leaders of the delegations to ensure that all the delegates are back on time in plenary. And for the media, the, se the se that session will still be open for you to, to, to attend. All delegates will be eating. There's a venue called Asteria, which is just behind the, the stage. You move this way and you go at the back. That's where we're all going to be having lunch. The media is only going to be the open session, is only going to be the report. Yeah, when you come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure, comrade, we can, break, we can break now. Come back at half past two sharp. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.